How how have you guys been doing over the course of the last now seven days, the last week with all of this? It's all broken. It's, it's, it's been tough. Yeah, it's been very, very tough. Losing someone, a family, is tough, especially the situation that, you know, it happened, it's even worse. So it's, it's been very, very heartbroken to everybody in the family. Yeah. And the body camera footage that was released yesterday, did you guys get to see that? Yes. Everybody in the family did. Me, personally, I watched a little bit, but it was too heartbroken for me. I couldn't go through the whole video, you know, especially seeing your loved one get killed the way they did. It's, it's hard. I couldn't watch it. And so how have you guys been processing through all of this over the last week? The family gathering and just showing one another love, even though my dad is no longer here, we still support one another to get through this. It's, it's where we cannot describe the pain that we're going through. It's, I can't even answer you. And why did you agree to come and sit and speak to the media today? Because the way in the situation that happened to my dad, we want justice for him. Even though it happened to our family today, we don't want the same thing to happen to another family. And we want our voice to be heard. Um, what have police told you about what happened leading up to the moment? Me, personally, I have not talked to one of them. As far as my other family probably did, but I have no idea just by reading the news and kind of just social media. That's all I know. There was word yesterday when the body camera footage was released, um, there were some rumors that he may have been homeless, that he didn't live at that apartment. Is that true? No, my dad lived in the apartment. My dad lived in the apartment. He moved into the apartment possibly about June. So he was not homeless. He got killed in front of his door. And that's not right. So what I did, didn't even give him a chance to talk to him. The first thing they see him, you know, all, all you hear is gunshots. And it's hard to watch. When was the last time you spoke to your dad? I spoke to the day uh, before he got killed. He actually called my mom an hour before all of this happened. Me living in Wisconsin, he actually called about 4 o'clock. He misses his grandkid. Since my dad doesn't drive, he was going to get the Greyhound to come and visit. Hang up the phone. Hour later, that happened, but we did not get the news until about 10 30 to 11 o'clock. And I know yesterday, also, one thing that was mentioned um, that they were trying to figure out if he even spoke English or could understand what the police were saying. Did he speak English? My dad did not speak English. He is very, very limited to English. And so, you think that that may have factored into how he responded? Yes, I do. Um, yeah, I guess I want to know what you want people to remember most about your father. What you want people to know about him. What's the most important thing? My dad is a very, very loving person. Growing up, I have only one brother and one sister, so it's the three of us. My dad always wished to have four kids. So my dad always adored kids, no matter what. Even though if it's not blood or blood, he always adored kids. My dad is always very kind to other people, not just to himself or his family. He's always very, very kind. He will go out of his way and the extra mile for anybody that needs help.
right there, it being fought the war. All the way up until we came to the United States. Even though we come to the United States, even though my dad don't drive, he still find a way to go work in and out just so that he could provide for us as a family. My dad was not a bad person. My dad is a very, very good person. The way that he go is not right and it's not fair. So we want justice for him. You said that your dad fought in the war. Talk to me a little bit about that. What war and what was... What he, he fought did? in the war. I, I was pretty young, so my dad fought in the Vietnam War with the Americans. He was a war veteran. Um, what are you going to miss about your dad? Everything. I, everything. I can't even like tell you what it is. It's everything about my dad. He's a lovely person. Now he's gone. I just need justice. And I'm going to do the best for him. Now I don't have no more dad. No, he came, no, my great came to work the grandpa's room. No, my, my son always asked, asked for grandpa. Oh, grandpa always called, asked for him, man, you know. Was he living alone? Yes, in the elderly home, in the apartment complex. He was alone. Um. <clears throat> you know, was he having... Was he having difficulties or problems in, in the last month or so? Because a couple of residents said that sometimes he would come into the community room and be, and he sounds like a very kind, loving person, so this seems out of character from what you're saying. He would come in very angry and yelling at people in the community room or people who were getting their mail. Was he having some difficulties? Was he having dementia or some, something else that maybe would make him act out of character from what you know, what you grew up with, who the man that is the loving, kind to everybody, loving children person. Is there any explanation for those, the, the people who, why people said that? No, my dad does not have any mental issue. My dad does not have any disorder issue. Okay. My dad's always been a good person. Something had to trigger him for him to get angry because he don't just get angry out of nowhere. Thank you. Um, was there anything else that you want the public to know or um, people that will be watching this later tonight to know as far as, you know, moving forward from all of this? I... I just don't want this to happen to anybody out there, family, or dad, family, any, anybody out there. I don't want this to happen to them. The same thing happened to my dad. And, you know, everybody there should know that. It's I, not right. I want people to think before they act. Don't jump into conclusion and just assume. Because when you jump into conclusion, assume, the tragedy is going to happen later on. You know, I, I, I want people to understand that if you don't investigate to the bottom line and you act first, it will be very bad at the end. Gonna translate what the parents and they are doing. So, the more that call is that listen to the talk to all the time. So, good things are now. They don't need that now. Yeah, I put all the call that. I think, yeah, well, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We are the sisters of him. 
He is a quiet person. He doesn't have short temper. He loves all the sisters. He loves my parents. He's a kind person. He's a great person. He's kind. He loves all his kids. And he works hard, even though he doesn't speak English. He always there for his kids. Now that he passed away, he break my heart. He break my heart. He's, as a sister, I don't know what to do. I want people to see it. Why? And know why. I want justice for my brother, for our own community. Today my heart's broken. I cannot even help myself. I look at this picture. I feel so sad, so angry, I cannot even eat. I'm more broken. I miss him. I love him so much. Please investigate by justice for my brother. Please. Justice. Help. Please help. Um, Brian, how many, how many siblings does the brother or does her brother have? There are three sisters, so this is the older brother, and then the younger sisters, and that is the wife, that's why the, the older sisters, and that's the middle sisters. No, that's the baby brother. This is the baby brother, okay, so this is the baby brother, the younger brother. So, so total, total, total he have. He had three sisters and two brothers. Three sisters. Three sisters, two brothers. Two brothers. Uh, Columbia, uh, Columbia, uh, Yami Lina. Yami Lina. My name is Yami Lee. I'm 66 years old. Uh, Columbia, yeah, yeah, my energy. My energy, my energy. Last many years. Yami I'm from Michigan. My first name Yang by A N G and M E E and then Lee L E E. The Hong Lee Yang Mi Lee. Yang Mi Lee. Yeah, my husband's a Lee. I'm a Zhang, so I the sister, and I'm married to a husband who's a Lee. I'm from Michigan. Wow. <laughs> I have 
could see him, my heart's broken. Very sad for me and the family. For me, if I say anything, I'm still sad. Our parents passed away, and so we came here to the country. So my brother is the older one. He helped the American. He's a veteran. He helped. He's a veteran. He helped the American fight the Secret War, the Vietnam War. He has been, you know, and when he was a soldier. You know, he used a rifle and then he shoot and make a lot of noise. Now he cannot even hear. Um, he is a kind person, no short temper, love everyone. So these are my siblings. We came here without parents because of the war and they all passed away during the war. So there's only two of us as brothers and our sisters. We love each other. I feel really sad. We escaped the war. And we see what happened in the war. And we came here. And they just killed my brother. Like they killed an animal. It break my heart to look at that. I just feel so sad. Heartbroken. And this only me now. No brother. I don't know where else to look up to. How am I going to end my life without my brother? We are often, because our parents passed away from the war, and he's the older, he loved everyone, all his siblings. And there's only us as offense, and he's so kind, he loves everyone. He have a heart here, and he won't hear a lot of people. And he live in the elderly home, and it, it, it's just heartbroken to see this happen to him. His brother had a hard time hearing. He said. His brother had a hard time hearing because uh, he used to fight the war, and then you know when he shot the gun and those noises, so it's affect the way how he hear things. So he barely hear people. So do we think that that may have been a factor into how he responded with police on Saturday? Yes. <laughs> he can't hear anything. You have to speak very loud or scream at him in order for him to hear you. Other than that, he won't hear you. So he was in the process to get him and me because he's a really quiet person and I work with my brother so we are trying to apply for him aid for him because he cannot hear. I knew my brother. No, he cannot hear anyone. He doesn't speak English. And then he will not know anything. And when they open the door, they just shut him. So 
I, I'm, I'm heartbroken. <laughs> when somebody died, regardless who you are, you will feel sad and cry. But look at my brother. They just shot him like an animal. And it just break my heart. <laughs> You have to speak next to him, next to his ear, so he can hear you. Even, even when you speak in the wrong language to him, he won't understand you until you speak clearly next to his ear that he know what you say. And this was all as a result of injuries from the war he fought in. And this was Vietnam? Yes. Because the Beijing army was in the war. Yes, because he served for the American fight for the Vietnam War. And that's how he affected this area. And just to confirm, he was that he served in the Vietnam War? Yes, the war, the Vietnam War, the American involved, and they recruit the more people to fight for them. Yes. The secret war. The secret war. Yes. My brother, I'm the youngest of everyone. So all my sister and everyone Mary before me, and I'm the youngest one. I live with him. I know him. He's a quiet person. He doesn't talk a lot. He's a kind person. He loves everyone. He loves his neighbors. So even though I'm his sister, he treats me like his own kid. So we are often, and even I marry her my own kids, he treats everyone like his own kids, because he's the older. We are here to fight justice for my brother. My brother is not a bad person. He's a great person. They are heaven. Telling you the truth. He's a great, great person. When I see him, he hugs me like he's my my own parents, and not like my brother. And now he's dead. I feel so sad. And when I watch the video clip, they shot him. I cannot even watch. I almost, I, I cannot watch the video. It's just like killing me. I know for sure. When he came out the door, I look at him how scary he was. Because he doesn't speak English, he doesn't know what's happening. And why can't the police be patient and communicate with him? He doesn't know anything, he's old. The police is the one who has the skill, the other one who trained. This is an elderly home. Why don't they observe and investigate? Instead, the shots come. I can't sleep. I feel pain, hurt every day. So we came all the way from Michigan. This happened to my family. It break my heart. I have not seen anything like this. And to kill my own brother like an animal, it just break my heart. 
Please watch the video. And find justice. Find justice. Investigate what actually happening. And they are the police, they, they are trained, they have the skill set. And why don't they talk to him? <laughs> when you look at the media, it looks like he's about to raise his head, but he did not get them. And then they kicked the door, and then he came out, and then they shot him. <laughs> So why don't they message it to call this elderly home? So what makes this elderly bring a knife? Well, what happened then? They did not look anything, they just came and shot him. Please look at investigate how this happened. Why is my brother who doesn't have short temper, very really quiet? Mm -hmm. What make him bring a knife? There must be something happening on that day. Investigate the place, the environment. There has to be something happening in that environment. So if you are the media, the press, please tell the truth. We want the truth. They are heaven, they are earth, they are God. We want the truth. If you stay local official, we want justice. We came here we ask you to look, to investigate, to observe what happened, how it happened. There must be something happened in the environment before this whole thing happening. And we hope in the future it won't happen to anyone else. So it won't happen to anyone more elder. It's heartbroken to see this. Even we do the same thing to anyone, it won't hurt anybody. Not just only our family. If the police do this to someone else, you feel the same thing. And if we call the police to come and serve, is this how you come and serve? Just to kill? And you look at the video, he came out, he was so scary. He doesn't know what happened, he cannot hear anyone. And they just kill him. How do you protect and serve? You cannot watch the video anymore. <laughs> Cannot watch the video clip anymore. Every time we watch it, it just feels like it's killing us. <clears throat> um, quick question for the kids. Two questions, actually. Um, the first question is, how many kids did your dad have? Uh, three of us. There's three of you? Yeah, I'm the oldest son and I got it. Two younger two, two second sister and the uh, younger ones that she's not here. So it's you and then two sisters. Yes. Okay. So three kids, um, one boy, two girls, and then my other question for you guys: um, How do you think? How do you? Um, how do you think this could have been handled differently? I think it's. I just need Justin and know how the difference is. You know, I, like I honestly I think 
there was a mom cow, you know. I think if he could have spoke alone to my dad, my dad would at least understand, and he would follow the rule, and none of this would have happened. Because my dad is very, very limited to English. He have a hard time of hearing too. And because they are so quick to jump into conclusion, they are not there to help. Me personally, I feel like they are there to kill. And that's exactly what they did. They killed my father. If they would have just be patient with me, with him, I think all of this would have handled differently. They could have just used the taser to taste him first and go from there. They didn't have to shoot him. You know, they, <coughs> right now it's hard to say because it's already done and, and, and <coughs> you know, there's no way I could bring my dad back. But there's a lot of way that this situation could have handled differently. Like I said, they would have just been patient with him and try to understand and try to figure out that he have a hard time hearing and he's limited to English. There has to be a way if they could have handled that differently. So you would say that it's safe to say that there's no reason why your father shouldn't still be here? Anything else? Yeah, uh, is he the only one in the family who lives in St. Paul or lives in Minnesota? No. Okay. But your your mom lives with you in Wisconsin? My mom is only in Wisconsin Ten. with me visiting to help me out with my kids. Does she normally live in the apartment with your dad? No, because that, that apartment is only under his name. And from what I understand, those elderly home, if you are not under there, you can't live there. So. My mom is only in Wisconsin helping me out to wash my kids. In that apartment, my dad, it's on his own because it's under his name only. Is there a reason that he's he's there and not with other family members? Well, he, he's, he's, you know, he's not working anymore. You know, he'll have a hard time working because of the age. And, you know, since the, the state helped him out with the elderly home, you know, he feel like, he don't want to bother other people living with other people. He rather just live by himself. And since he got the apartment, why not take the opportunity and live by myself? Does your mom live with other family members when she's back in Minnesota? Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you do have a big family here in <coughs> I town do. as well. I do. Okay. Okay. It seems like your family also is uh, large and spread out and very close to come. What would you like to say to the Hmong community, community leaders? Um, on that day, I will let mm -hmm. my aunt and my uncle, my mom, Neha, speak on that. Okay, why are you Hmong? Neha, Neha, you are the one who is 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 the one Ah, <laughs> Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn.
And the sister came all the way from Michigan, very far away. So I want the Hmong community and leader, please help my family. Please help me. It's heartbroken. I need to find justice. I need your help to find justice for my brother who cannot speak English, who cannot hear. So I'm far, far, I live far away. So I need your support. Please help. May God bless the community, bless all the elders. So hopefully this won't happen to any family in the future.